But I want to draw your mind's eye today to the epistle of 1 Peter, chapter 1. While we look there and we see what the Lord will say to us as we continue on this journey and focusing it on spiritual maturity. We see here in this epistle that the apostle Peter is writing to the saints. According to 1 Peter 1, they are the saints who are the result of the persecution were scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And when he writes his second epistle in 2 Peter 1, he also addressed them to be the elect, those who were predestinated by God, those who were sanctified or set apart. Not only that, but you must pay attention that he also calls them those who have obtained precious faith, like precious faith. Note, through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter, as I, I, I read, understands clearly that he has been called to the Jews. And he is ensuring by the help of God that he addresses them and that he builds them up in the things of God. And so he's not speaking to everybody. He is speaking to those of like precious faith. Last week, when we were here, we talked about there are many vines. There are many religions in this world. And everybody will not be able to understand the perspective from which you are coming from because they are not of like precious faith. So there will be arguments. There will be misunderstandings and there will be various opinions. But this morning, like Peter, I am addressing we here at the Guiding Light Tabernacle and those who are online, saints of God and those of like precious faith. Those who know the God in whom they believe. Those who know that Jesus is the Son of God. Those who know that the, the power of God was exerted in Jesus Christ. And that he raised him up from the dead. And we believe that he is seated at his father's right hand. That is why he says, people who are of like precious faith. Those who believe the same thing. Those who say the same thing. Those who are of one mind. Who have received this faith. And how you receive it. Not through any other means or any way. You have received it through the righteousness of God. God has imputed his righteousness to us through who? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is a distinction. And that is why as we preach and teach, we need to clarify and we need to um, explain the scriptures so that people will clearly understand who we are speaking of to our audience and who are, who are we speaking about. Amen? We are speaking about this God who has imputed to us that righteousness and we have obtained it through the atonement, through the work at Calvary is responsible for who we are today in Jesus Christ. Give God praise and give him glory. As he greets the saints, you note here one of the things that you must observe is that these saints, as I said, they have been scattered abroad. They are under heavy persecution. And one of the things that I observed here while I was studying this word, that even though you may be going through hard trials and different stuff to challenge your faith, you still must remain faithful. You still have to encourage yourself in the things of God. You still have to maintain a strong 
focus, a resolute faith, one that will not be shaken or broken. Somebody gave the Lord praise. So as he writes, he's conscious of this, that they are faced with many manifold trials. The trial of their faith is, has been put to the test. But I'm glad that as he addresses them, he understands that God is able, despite of what they are going through, able to keep them, able to sustain them. And even yesterday, in my mind's reflection, and I was thinking back, I see for myself that God has been good to us in that he has kept us. With all that is happening globally, from 2019 ending, 2020, 2021, 2022, God has been faithful to us. Because what we are going through is like a war. It's like a war. As people describe it, but a war with an unseen enemy. Hmm? And Peter is conscious of what the saints are going through. That is why he says in his salutation, grace and peace. Be, oh God, I give you praise. Be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. And this morning as I speak to you, I speak to you the grace of God. I want you to lift your hands even now as I speak. I never get tired of doing this. Because all of us are going through something or the other. But Peter knows what is able to help them to go through. And as an apostle, he speaks to them in spite of what they're going through. The grace. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Guided like Tabernacle family. Those who are present here today in the annex and those who are online. I speak to you the grace the grace, the grace, the grace of God in your life. Not only the grace, because when you are going through, not only you need the grace, but you need the peace. You need peace of mind. That is why that this, in this kind of time, we are having so many issues with mental health. But today, I speak to you, the grace. Receive the grace. Receive the grace of God from off of this altar and the peace, the peace of God that passeth all understanding. And I pray today that as you receive it, you will receive it through the knowledge of God and also of Jesus Christ. Because when he was going away, Jesus was going away. He said to his disciples, my peace. I gave to you. Not as the word gave, give I unto you, but my peace I live with you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Can we get a praise in the house? So despite where you are this morning, whatever your challenge is, you are going to make it. You are going to succeed. You are going to win. You are going to overcome. You will come out on the other side. Because if this God can keep us at the turn of 2019 and through 2020 and into 2021, he is able. Somebody needs to give God a better shout than that. He is able to keep that which we have committed unto him. Against that day. Lift your hands and give him thanks. You have to look back. It's not us that is keeping ourselves. But it's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. And one thing I'm learning that God doesn't remove everything you pray or try to pray away. We've been praying about this pandemic. But everything God don't remove immediately. He told Paul, oh Jesus I give you praise. Has he prayed once? And he prayed twice. And he prayed three times. God answered Paul. And he said, Brother Paul, my grace, my grace, my grace is sufficient 
for you. My grace, my sustaining grace, my upkeeping grace, my powerful grace is able to keep you. And my strength, oh Jesus, my strength is perfected in weakness. I give God glory and give him praise this morning. Hallelujah for me. He who has begun a good work in me. He is fearful. He is fearful. To take me through. To the end. He said the grace of God. Be multiplied. 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 Multiplied to you. In every area. The grace of God. Be multiplied to you. As you come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because this is important as you get to know who Jesus is. Amen. Then you become stronger in that grace. Because it's by grace that you are saved and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. It is the unmerited favor of God that he has given to us. And as you come into that knowledge, you begin to understand. You begin to appreciate what he has done for you, you become stronger. You're able to ride out your storms. You're able to hold up your head. Situations haven't changed. Every morning you wake up, it is the same pandemic you got to meet. But the grace of God causes you to rise up out of your bed. The grace of God gives you the strength to go to your workplace. The grace of God brings you through the day. The grace of God enables you, empowers you. To face another day. Oh, somebody give God glory and praise. I thank God for his grace. Because his grace that has brought me thus far. Is his grace that is going to lead me on. And lead you on. He says this grace and peace be multiplied to you. But he also says... According to his divine power. Not only grace. Not only peace. But God have exerted in us his divine power. That's why I say today, I don't go by how I feel. I don't let my emotions override. I say what God says, sister. Let the weak say, I am strong. I am able. I am more than able to do what God has entrusted me to do. Why? Because he has not only given me his grace and his peace to keep us stable. You understand what I'm saying? But he has given me his divine power. The same power that was exerted in Christ I want you to believe God's word, though. When you raise him from the dead, Jesus said, in three days, I'm going to lay down my body. And in three days, I'm going to raise it up. And the Bible tells me that God exerted in Christ what he was in Sheol, the grave. God exerted his power. Then scripture tells me if the same power. Wow, Jesus. That God exerted in Christ. Dwell in you. You will also have power. Because it would quicken. Your mortal body. Power to stand. Power to go through. Power to overcome. Power to override every situation. Power to swim. I am no weakling. I am here by chance. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. Walking in miracles. I live a life. Somebody. And I know. 
without a shadow of a doubt of who I am. Because there's no me, no more me, no more I that live. Karaboshaya. But it's Christ now that I've taken on. I, 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 I can't do this life by myself. I, 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 I have died. And I allow him to live it through me. No more I that live, Paul said. But Christ who liveth in me. Somebody give the Lord glory and praise. God is raising up a spiritual army in this time to understand his word. To show that the work that was done at Calvary, it was a powerful work. God exerted the same power in you and me to enable you and me to live this Christian life. So he says, according to the divine power, the, oh God, I give you praise. That power has given to you and me all things. I want you to say, I have all things. Say it again, I have all things. All things have been given to me by God. So I'm not going under. I am going over. Because underneath me, Woo, Jesus, are his everlasting arms. I shall not die. No matter what the doctor is reporting, I shall live and declare the glory of God. I will live out my time. Nothing shall abort my destiny. For if God is for me, who can be against me? Somebody give God praise. I shall finish well. And not only shall I finish well, but I shall finish strong. Because he has exerted this divine power in me. And has also, as, as when Jesus was going back, he says, I'm going back, you know. My work here is finished. But I am not going to leave you comfortless. I am not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to leave you to struggle through this Christian life. And wonder if you can live it and wonder if you can't live it. I am going to pray to my father to send you another comforter. And when he has come, the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, he will download. He will download all that the Father has. He will download it in you. That's why you can say that I have the power. And I have all things that I need that pertain to this life. Hallelujah. I shall not lack for anything. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Thou anointest my head with oil. God, my cup, Karaboshaya, run over. I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in abundance. I'm living with expectation. I'm living with the understanding that he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which I can ever think, ask, or even desire. I have proven that over the years. Why? Because I saw after God's righteousness first. When I look back at the carnal things, oh, Jesus help me. Huh? Too much to handle. Huh? When you look back, the scripture is true. Put God first. And all that you need, he will supply. Can I get a praise the Lord today? Is there anybody in here today that can stand up and say, huh? That I trust in this God, but he can hear really true? Is there anybody? That could stand up in this congregation and say this, this thing like they're real. I want to say a serving God is real. 
This is the best thing that can ever happen to me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack for anything because scripture tells me as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. Scripture tells me that my bread and my water is sure. Scripture tells me if I trust in God, I shall not be put to shame. Scripture tells me that all of my needs he shall supply according to his riches in glory. So I walk in favor. I walk in favor. I walk in prosperity. Because you know some persons, the Christian think that this thing that I'm talking about is that you're going to see this big lump sum before you want time. But it's the everyday proving. God give you enough for every day. Just like how you give the children of Israel manna every day. Pick up as much as you could handle every day. He daily loadeth us with benefits. I have all things. Church of God, we need to, we need to appropriate God's word. We need, to, we need to believe it. When we believe it, our faith is activated and then things begin to shift and to come into place. The land you're believing God for is yours. Hey, somebody give the Lord praise. The home you're believing God for, don't mind how long, it is yours. Your name is on it. I have a miracle and my name is on it. He has given to me. God is a what struggles I'm going through. God, these people that he's speaking to, having it hot. Because you know that when you have it like this, sometimes your mind could turn. You can win. Oh, somebody help me here today. But he's strengthening them through the word of God. And he is encouraging them and letting them know, even though a pandemic has struck, and even though we had a situation the other day when all of these ships were halt and people were saying that there was not going to be food and shortage of food, I don't matter what the world has to say. All of these ships could stop. Kiraboshaya. The world could even stop. My God. My God don't wait on ships. My God is the God who speaks the word. Provide a meal for a man of God by the name of Elisha. Oh, Jesus, I give you praise. We don't operate with the systems of this world. We operate in a kingdom where there's no lack. That is why I can tell you, I have all things that pertain to life and also to what? Godliness. What does Titus tell us? Titus, Titus tells us. That God, amen. Huh? Godliness, yes. But he says in the book of Titus that teaching us to deny ungodliness and worry us, we will live godly in this present world. God has given to us, the believer, all that we would need. Equip us, he has equipped us. Even by the means of giving us his Holy Spirit, he has equipped us. Everything that we will need to live this godly life, God has equipped us. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise here. God wants us to be strong believers. That's why Peter was reaching out to them because he wanted them in the midst of the trial, stay strong. Are you hearing me? In the midst of the crisis, in the midst of what is happening worldwide, stay strong. Believe your God for it shall be as he told me. I'm here to encourage you in the things of God. The, 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 the pure word, the pure word, the pure word, which is life. I come here today to dispense. He says, to back up all that he said, that God has given us all things 
that pertain to life and godliness, and you, you will get to understand. He has given, he has done it, he has done it, he has done it. But you are going to get to understand it better as you come into the knowledge of him. You're going to get to understand it better as you, it's, I, I haven't scratched the surface yet. As I was speaking to you last week about the power of understanding as you come into it. And your understanding is being enlightened. And you understand the length, the width, and the breadth, and the height. You're going to understand it better and you'll be able to stand. That's why when the Lord says to Philip, go down to Gaza. Huh? And he went down there, he was translated. Then he saw a eunuch. And the Spirit of God said, join to him. And then he saw him reading portions from Isaiah. And he says, huh? understand this, what thou readest. He was reading it like a normal book. Mind blank. He could not proceed spiritually. Hmm? But then it took Peter huh, to bring him spiritual understanding. Who is the uh, writer speaking about? Is he speaking of himself or, or he's speaking of another? A speak. Philip was able to give him the revelation. Hallelujah. What we need is that understanding and that understanding that will bring revelation, knowledge unto us so we'll be better equipped because I go back on this scripture. The people who know their God shall be strong. Hmm? So he has given to us all things through the knowledge of him. And, and this is because of what has been achieved through Jesus Christ. And I notice that he mentions concerning the promises whereby are given to us what? Talk, talk to me. You're on the same page? Huh? I, I, I did a study on one of the school, um, school of prayer nights, Bible study on the promises I went through every Tuesday night on the promises of God. Trying to strengthen your faith because if you would believe on the promises, amen, your faith would be activated to believe God and to ask him for what you are standing in the need of. And he has given to us. Not just promises. Lord I give you praise. You love God. Lord I give you praise. Not just promises. Exceeding great and precious promises. That's what the word of God says. And I want you to understand here that by these, are you here with me today? Are you here? That by these, you might be do what? You might be, you might be do what? By these, believing on the promises of God, as you believe on the promises of God and what he can do for you, you then will become partakers of the divine nature of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, I give you praise. I need somebody to just go ahead and praise God for one minute. Open my eyes, Lord. Open my eyes, Lord. Open my ears, Lord. Open my eyes. Open my ears, Lord. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from thy scriptures. Not only has he exerted his power within us, brother, but it tells me that we can become like the likeness in the image of Jesus Christ. Oh God, I give you praise. We are not only ordinary now. We are not just ordinary. But because of the divine nature, we, we, we can become extraordinary. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Not just like, you know, you know when Samson loses the spirit of God, he just becomes like a normal man. <laughs> he becomes like a normal man. But because of the divine nature in us, huh? God's DNA, God's DNA is in us. The divine nature of God has now been in us, by the atonement, by the work that was done through the Lord Jesus Christ. 
So I live not after the flesh, but I live after the that I might be partakers of the divine nature. Oh, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. I have now not only been given grace and peace and power, but God has also enabled me now to be a partaker of his divine nature. And if I am a partaker of his divine nature, it means my life has to change. Look at metamorphosis taking place. Change from glory to glory as I get into the scriptures and I begin to activate the promises that God has for me and put them in practice. My life cannot remain the same. It has to change from glory. I, I am being changed. Oh, every day my life is being changed from glory because there's a work, there's an inner work that is happening within you and me. There's a, there's a sanctification process that is taking place as the word comes. He said, now are you cling to the word that I have spoken to you. Hallelujah. And as the word comes, it washes, it purges, it, it cleanses, it, it removes. It cuts, it heals, it divides asunder down to the very bones of man. There's an inner work. There's a transformation that that is taking place. Change is taking place because I'm being changed. Because of the divine nature, I'm being changed. I'm becoming more like God. I'm becoming more like his son. More understanding is coming through the scriptures and now I'm taking on form. I'm being spirit form. From the inside. There's a, you see there's a word that goes on. From the inside. Oh. Religion. That many people have been blinded. But over years. Have been doing a work. From the outside. Trying to get in. But God does a work. Woo Jesus. From the inside. Out. He changes my mind and my way of thinking. He changes my heart and my actions. He changes as I yield to him. Give him glory and praise. 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 Him glory and, praise. and as I'm being changed, as I'm being changed, as sanctified by the word of God, understanding is being enlightened. My shifts, mental blocks, limitations are being broken. Things that I was blinded on that have hindered me through my life now become stepping stones. And I'm making and I'm taking ground Somebody give the Lord praise. I am advancing in the things of the kingdom. Oh, Jesus, I give you praise. I am understanding the language, the culture, the behaviors of the kingdom. Because his DNA is in me. Somebody give the Lord praise. I'm a partaker. That's why it comes, coincides with the word partaker. Ear. What father has, I have. Co ear. John ear. If my wife opens a bank account at any of the banks, and she chooses to put my name next to hers, I become a junk ear or signatory. As long as our hearts are one and we are in agreement, 
I can have the permission and agreement to withdraw. What is hers becomes mine. And the major said mine's. May I say vice versa? Somebody lift your hands and give God for you. What daddy has is mine's. It's the Holy Spirit's duty to reveal the will of God to us. That's why you said in the Lord's Prayer, where you pray. Priority. First, don't go on to your knees yet. Thy will be done. So I pray, tell God, let your will be established in my life for today. Whatever you have written in the books before the foundation of time, let it be manifested today. The people I have to meet, meet today. The connections I need today for my advancement. The favor that I need today. Because let me tell you something. All you need sometimes is a little favor. Sometimes we work ourselves so hard. All we need sometimes is a little favor to make what is impossible possible. You tell it to Mary. Hello, Mary. You are highly favored. And what was impossible in her life? Favor made it possible. Somebody give the Lord praise and glory. So partakers of the divine nature make me an heir. Are we understanding? And joint heir. I am no beggar. I am no foreigner. Alien. I'm a fellow citizen of the kingdom of God. I am an adopted son. I have been accepted in the beloved. He has accepted me and he has also forgiven me. And now I have an inheritance that fadeth not away. Somebody need to give God glory and praise. Divine partaker, partakers of the divine nature. So why am I saying this? That you and I will rise up and begin to access. No, it don't, it don't start off with every... Activate your faith little by little. Little by little. Begin to believe God for some things. And then as you see God do some things, you believe it for some more. Activate your faith where these exceeding and great promises are concerned. They are there for us. We are beneficiaries. Am I talking truth or not? I am a beneficiary. Isn't that wonderful? Sister, that have no earthly body leave anything for me. I am a beneficiary of the kingdom. I have a rich inheritance, you know. Huh? And as we go on in the word of God, as we are dealing with this spiritual maturity, next thing that you have to understand, we all have to, although Jesus has saved us, we have to walk out our faith. We have to make effort. Not that we, the works that we do will save us, but you're still living in this world and you have to occupy until he comes. You have to work out, as I said last week, your own salvation with fear and trembling. You have to walk the walk and talk the talk. And how do you do it? He says here, and besides all that I just mentioned, given all diligence. Diligence here means that you're going to be careful and that you're going to be persistent. I do believe that sometimes this is the problem with some of us. We're not persistent enough. We give up too easy. We're going to work at it. We are going to make, as the word of God says, every effort. We're going to become that diligent Christian. 
We are going to become as described as Christians who are not laid back, who are not lackadaisical, but those who are assiduous. Those who are consistent and conscientious. People who are thorough. People who are not idle or negligent concerning the salvation that God has given to us. So we are going to, we are going to make sure that we give all diligence. I remember that was a word when I went to Trinidad. I think it was for vacation sometimes. And you know, you're waiting on the Lord in, the, you, 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 in, your, in your spirit. You, you, you are connecting and you're waiting for him to speak. And the Lord gave me that word, diligent. When you go back, be diligent. Be diligent. And a diligent person, for example, if that person is looking for gold, you don't find it on the surface though. You have to dig for it. You have to make effort. So you have to be diligent about what I'm speaking to you about. Now, now let me say this as I go through. Don't make this a Sunday morning go to meeting thing. You come here, you hear the word, but as you go back out during the week, you are diligent. You take up a walk was said, and you go further. You dig deeper. You get more revelation, more understanding of what is being said. Don't let it be a Sunday morning thing that we just come to receive. But be diligent. Are we understanding? Not lazy. We are doing what we are doing. I know sometimes persons lose their focus as, oh, just get up this morning. What is the real purpose of going down here. I'm getting tired. You know, they're going to sing. They're going to worship. They're going to bring a word. I'm, you know, that's routine as far as I'm concerned. It don't be routine for me. This is a school that you come to learn. So it don't, it's not a routine. Anytime you find that this is routine, you are on your verge backsliding. Tell, let, tell that the apostle tell you so. Anytime you are coming to the house of God and it means really nothing and it's not impactful and, and, and you want something else, you are backsliding. Your, your thoughts is in another place. This is a school. And, and as, as teachers of the word, there's a, there's a way how God, but your Apostle Paul is struck how the church is to be led. Read it. Worship. Huh? Word. Somebody have a testimony. Somebody have a song. Somebody have an exhortation. So don't get tired with it. Put yourself in position. That's why I try to get across to us. You put yourself in. If you stay out, huh, then it's going to become monotonous. Oh, Lord, you have to go down another, another Sunday morning. Thank God for Jesus. <gasps> God, I give God such praise that he could allow me to be here this day to add value, to serve in his kingdom. Don't you see that too? As you are worshiping in here this morning, you are, you, God has given you the privilege to serve. In your various capacities and leadership, huh? you are there serves to serve. So this is no drudgery. Anytime you find you're getting drudgery, get by your knees quick. You're drifting. You're drifting. You're drifting. If church is become, becoming monotonous to you, you're drifting. Because every time I come with a, a heart of expectation, I come who oh, believing. I come excited. I come with enthusiasm. Don't try to shut me down. Don't try to tell me I need all of that. I'm sorry for you. I need all of this and more. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. My salvation is not drudgery. It's, I'm not enjoying Jesus. I am enjoying him. He's getting sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's why you have to speak to people who are going through being persecuted because you know, as I said, when you're on the fire, there's two things that can happen. 
It's either that the pressures of life can break you and turn you against God or you're going to stay in the fire. You're going to say, Lord, I don't understand what you're doing, but I love you. You've got to let the love of God overshadow you. And despite of what you are facing, pandemic, this thing, the other thing, all things God are working together, God, for my good, and I love you. And I'm going to remain. I'm going to stand, Lord. The pressure is hot. I'm feeling it, Lord. I'm burning, Jesus. But, Lord, I love you. Peter is trying to encourage the people in fire. The people who are scattered, the people who have it hard, the people who don't have nearly no really citizenship. They run from one place to try to find rest. To try to find a home. Dig up from where they are, going all Asia, running persecution is hot. So you're, you're fleeing, you're looking for you're running for your life. It's uneasy, it's not settled. Peter is speaking to those kind of people, and he's saying. Despite all that you are going through, to what Jesus Christ has done for you, you can make it. That's all we need now. Huh? Amen. Amen. You gotta talk to yourself. You gotta encourage yourself. Amen. Don't let nobody tell you. you got a salvation that God is from some rocking chair and he, he's an old man now. He's not able. He got, he's he got to wait for, for, for him to hear because he's got to put a hair in it. God is able. More than able to accomplish what concerns me today. Give God some praise in the house, somebody. Give God some praise in the house, somebody. He's going to take me through. He's going to take me and you through. When we look back, we're going to see the bigger picture of what he has been doing. But in the meantime, occupy. Don't pause. Understand what I'm saying here today. In the meantime, giving all diligence he says, add to your faith. Don't pause. Don't back down. And some man said, no retreat, no surrender. Huh? Keep working. Whatever your hands find to do, do it. And how you do it? With all of your might. If God, if, so, if you're the time for the, you're to moderate, do it with enthusiasm. The drumming and you're playing in the band. Do it with energy. Do it as unto God. Are you hearing? Add to your faith. Not that now you're going to be circumcised. The whole rest will start. You have to do something else in order to be safe. You're safe already. But walk out your faith. Amen. And add to it. Somebody give God a high note of praise in this place. <laughs> Build up yourself. Don't wait for nobody to build you up either. Build up yourself. When you're alone, build up yourself. Oh, Jesus, even if you, you might not read, but let the scriptures come back to you. you repeat the word and say the word over yourself and bless yourself. Don't wait for nobody to bless you. Bless yourself. Hallelujah to Jesus. Bless yourself. Encourage yourself. Add to your faith. I would not be able today to get through with all of these. That is why leaving, giving you some and I giving you some more some other time or how the Holy Spirit have me now breaking into for different portions. But you're going to be hearing as I spoke last time on the fruit of the Spirit coming up shortly. You're going to hear all of those fruits explained. I didn't leave nothing on turn at all. Huh? You're going to hear individually as I say how oh, important that fruit and character you're going to hear them break down for a later time coming. It's coming. Somebody give the Lord praise. I want to give you two scriptures before we move on to the adding of our faith. And the first one is Hebrews 11.6. 6. 
this, this is talking about the diligent part that I'm talking about. Hebrews 11, 6. And uh, if you can help us, that would be appreciated because we will do it quickly. Let's read this scripture of affirmation here together. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who he's a rewarder of them that so the more your heart seek after God you will be rewarded. David said as the heart panteth after the water brooks so my soul panteth after thee. You must be diligent. Proverbs 12, 24. This is just reference to, to when I speak about being diligent. Proverbs 12, 24. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. And that is one of the dependency syndromes that even in, is in this early that culture that needs to be broken. There's a lot of things I got to speak about, you know, Elder. As I sit down with these things and I write it down because there must be a voice. There must be a voice. Don't just observe. God tell me don't be an observer, just an observer, but speak. For the benefit of somebody else. So that slowful, give me, give me. Dependency handout syndrome that is prevalent throughout this island must be broken. Naturally spiritual. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. This is where now you become the lender and not the bar. Huh? You become the head and not the tail. But if you be slowful, you're going to be on the tribute. Always on the and God ain't called me to be under. He called me to have dominion, power, and authority. Am I talking today? Next scripture. Galatians 6, 9. Galatians 6, 9. And let us, we, we, I want us, to, what I'm doing here now, in these sessions, as I was doing it before, I want more participation and, you know, in interaction. And let us, yes, not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. That calls for diligence. When you see a farmer going to work, and those of us that do our little thing, huh? When you go to the garden, you, you know what you're, you're looking for. Huh? But you got to be patient. You can't get weary. Sometimes the thing looks left, it's not going to bring forth. But you wait on it. Huh? You give it the little pesticides and different things that you might see the things that are happening. Huh? And you continue with it until it produces huh? what you're looking for. Don't be weary here. Saints of God in this persecution and the heat that is on. And the new world order. I have a whole topic on that. Because I can speak on the new world order. That's a topic by itself. Let us not be weary. Don't get weary. The pressure is on. But sister, brother, don't get weary. A lot of God's people are getting weary. Weary. Wear out. That, that is the, the spirit that is over the world. There is an oppressive spirit. Demons have been unleashed in the atmosphere. Dragon spirits, beast-like spirits have been unleashed from the sea. And it's roaming the atmosphere. And what they want to do is to stifle the church. That's the whole big game there, you know. You think it really after anything else? If I could shut the voice down. The voice of conscience down. I have it. So there are spirits that are being released to stifle and oppress and choke. But don't be weary. The fire is on. 
Just like the Hebrew boy, you think this is Hebrew boys? Don't we read that? We read all of them things to help me with. No! Fire is on and it is heated seven times hotter. Don't get weary. Don't bow. Church, I encouraging you this morning. Hold on to God. For the fourth man is in the fire. Don't get weary. Some are getting weary. Some have not crossed these doors since 2020. They're getting weary. And the more you stand out, and you won't even get a day in, is the more Satan can plague your mind. He can beat you down. And when done, you don't have no desire for God or the things of God. Take it from me. I've been in this here for a while now, and I know what the devil can do. You lose your desire, you don't want to cross them doors. You even, uh, you even make an effort to get in one or two. You say, Man, do something. You got to do something for the adding of your faith and to be building up. You got one day, so do, you got to do something. I don't take these times as no excuse to stay away from God's house. As long as we have given up, something will got to be real major wrong. And we know we can't come in at all. That we will know we can't come. But make every opportunity. Amen. Don't make no excuses because you must say, I ain't going into the church, but you're still going to the supermarket, the bank, different places. Come on! Come on! Don't let the devil fool us. The devil is after shutting down the voice and the conscience. Don't get weary. I said all of that to say, don't get weary. Don't get weary. Hold on. Press on. Go through with God. Somebody give the Lord praise and glory. This is all about adding to your faith. You know, in, in the, in the, when the pressure is on, you can take a seat and sit back. And you could be like Elijah. Come to that juniper tree. You think it is you, only you, that stand up for God. Huh? Discouragement can hit you below the belt. You feel it's only you now. Best thing to do is die. Take me out, Lord. It's no worth. It is no worth. This I, I taught this thing. I taught this serving God thing was different. But true much tribulation. I feel the Holy Ghost. You shall enter in. Too much fight, you shall enter in. Too much affliction, you will enter in. For many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord, deliver him, deliver them out of them all. Don't get weary, church. I, I, I don't know, but the Spirit of God is upon me today to encourage. I don't know where you're at. Huh? But God knows where you're at. Some, sometimes some people just at the very end. The very end. But today as they tell you, tie a knot. Don't let go. Take another grip. Hold on. I never let go. Lift your hands in this place. Mighty God. Oh Jesus. And to your faith. Add to your faith. Don't get lazy. Add. This is the time now when the pressure is on. You need a strong faith. The oh. God says, put on the whole armor. But there's something you got to note. He says, and above all, take the shield of Above all, you may God on. If you don't have faith, you still can't fight. Above all, take the shield of faith. Whereby 
whereby you'll be able to quench, 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 quench. And you know, our prophet just went through it sometimes, years. I don't forget things. How they used to have the shield and the interlock, and it was soaked with water. So, oh, my Lord. And when the arrows of the enemy, God, they used to light them arrows of fire. And when they come, they wet the shields and, and the lock. Hallelujah. When those, when those darts come, boom, out. Shield of faith. That you might be able to quench. All oh, the fairy dance of the enemy. Lift your hands and give King Jesus glory in the house. Give King Jesus glory in the house. Let me see what time I have. I might be able to touch one. But I will continue. The first one is virtue. I might only be able to touch one. But there are seven things that Apostle Peter told those who were scattered abroad to add to their faith. And the first one is virtue. What is virtue? You know that when people are going through trials, it's sometimes where they sell out. We saw you that. Belly touch. Huh? Hunger strike. And he said, man, look, what about this inheritance thing? Man, I'm going to fix my belly. I'm hungry. People, get, people, people, when the pressure is hot, as I tell you, there could be one, two things that could happen. There are people who give in. Huh? Little pottage here. Huh? But this scripture is telling me I must have virtue, which speaks the high moral standard as a, as a believer. It is easy when you are under pressure huh, to sell Jesus, man, for 30 pieces of silver. You see the one that he come yonder, he's the man. It's easy when you are under pressure to deny Jesus. Who are you talking about, lady? I, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't know him. I don't know him. The pressure is on now. Because whoever probably is identified licks and for you. So no, 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 it's either time to put your mouth where your talk is, no the pressure on, you want to ease up. I don't know. He is one, yes, yes. I see him in the crowd. He was one that was there. Who are you talking about? I don't know that man. Who blah, 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 blah. Jesus said before the crow, crow arrived, you talking about talk? Well, you know your heart. Virtue. Virtue. And as I wind up here, because Lord, you know I can't handle all of this right now. Because the time, I'm still conscientious of the time. Huh? There's a problem even within the church where virtue is concerned. People holding high moral standards. That has even been decayed. And God wants us to raise the bar. Raise a standard. He, 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 who prophet it was that he said, go through and raise a standard. Raise a standard for God. And in your difficult times, you have to, you have to, 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 to be able to raise that high moral standard for your life. Yeah? Man or woman. Because it's a real dangerous age we live in in a world. Huh? Man or woman. You know when your back hit the wall and you lost your job and you don't know where the next cent is going to come from but you want to say it quick. You don't want to trust God that you trust before. You want a quick way out. Quick money. You do anything to get it. Tell yourself to get it. But God says, add when you're going through the pressure, don't, don't sell your birthright. Don't sell your soul. As I look and I am observing, people are selling their souls. What is going wrong? What is happening? 
Are we being entangled and being enslaved again in the yoke of bondage where we can't think now for ourselves? <coughs> when I looked the other day, when that charter was being put together and it was coming time for the vote in the house, and not a man, not a man could say, well, I agree with such and such, but such and such. Lord, help me up here. Not a man. When the vote was come, Elder, do you? I, I, I deny God. I don't know where you are living or if you live in the same place as me. I, you can't agree to everything. Don't tell me you agree with everything. Huh? You gotta take a stand. Huh? Even if you're even if you're the loner, you must take a stand. Even if you're gonna get all the ridicule, you must take a stand. Especially if you say you name the name of God and you are Christ's disciple. You should know the word. So it tells me that you don't know the word. You don't even know the God in whom you serve it. Because if I could take you, a man who profess and say you know God, and by the time I finish you, you even know God. Read between the lines. By the time I finish with you, you even know God. God, you don't even know the God and who you was talking about. And it reveals to me in this island a lot of people only have God as a religion. People who are in high stature only, only talk God. But they don't really know God. You don't have to say amen to that. Sila. What is Barbados coming to? The island that I knew that has some kind of moral standing. Where is this nation going? Everybody head in the sand and going headlong. That's why we must stand here and, and teach the word of God. He says as you are on the fire, add virtue. Have some kind of high moral standard and value yourself, man. We had some family life teachings here. Huh? And you think I forget them? You must value yourself. You must be a person of integrity. You must be a person of respect, honor. You remember or you remember? Huh? These are the things that we, 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 we have been taught. God first. How, how do you rank? God first. God first. God first. And when we are going to be having people who can buy us, it's a different story. Nobody can buy me, though. No. Because I must know as an individual how much I am worth. And there's no dollar that can buy me. I am not more I am not I have come out of slavery though. I have been emancipated. And you're not going to make it now something now of a different way of doing it and enslave me again. I am of high value where God is concerned and I will not be brought low. I hope you all understand what I'm saying because there's a lot of us in the church who are selling out God. Selling out God. That's why I tell you when the fire is on, you can either deny Jesus and say, Man, I ain't with this thing anymore because the fire on. <clears throat> but, eh, brother, the God of heaven. Don't even deliver me. I stand the ground. 
I will not be moved. I will not be changed. I will not alter or compromise this word. God said he wants us to add to our faith. And one of the things, that God put a, a rebuilding anointing upon this little thing. You know, thing. Huh? So you see all the things that are being broken down. He, he's putting them to, for me to speak to them. Because if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? We have to rebuild the ruined places and the things that are being decayed in town. Value yourself, people. Value yourself and hold your head up high. Don't be bought. Don't be bought. Have high moral standards about yourself. We must be true, honorable, have humility, integrity, righteousness. We must be excellent. We must have that compassion. And I can close off here now. Go to Philippians 4, 8 because I must give you the biblical imperatives that substantiate what I am saying to us here today. May God help this country. That's all I can say here from this pulpit this morning. It, it is, it's going down. And I don't prophesy that. It's going away that it should not go. You don't want to see it. I ain't going to say it, but I hope that you ain't going down with it too. Finally, let me read, brethren. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, think, or any praise, think on these things. Don't settle for any and anything. As a child of God, we are settling for the status quo. Huh? When I in Rome, I do like Rome. When I am in Rome, I am a child of God, Deacon Braffitt. I don't change. I am no chameleon. When I am Barbados, I am a child of God. When I outside the church, I am a child of God. And you read about Timothy. Huh? That young man that lived such a life. That his character was reported all down in Iconium. That young man that had a, 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 you know, a good reputation that Paul could have put his hands on him. He was, the Bible said he was well reported. Are you well reported? What are others saying about you as a Christian? She? She? He? She can stand home. Are you a person of virtue? Like the woman in Proverbs. The Bible called her virtuous woman because what was oozing from that, uh, that life? Industrious. Huh? Reliable. Trustworthy. All the characteristics that flowing from her caused her to be virtuous. Are we virtuous? People of virtue. People of high moral standards. People that what was wrong is not that the world, oh, no, you know, you know, the, the world is changing now, you know. So we've got to ad adapt and we have to be open now. We have to have an open mind. We have to be tolerant, you know. Righteousness! Exorcination! But sin is still a reproach. It didn't change to any people. The world may change, but God never changes. You should give God a big shout for that. You're going to either come up 
or decide what you're going to do. He is not coming down or altering his, altering his word for none of us, including me. None of us. Let God be God and let God be true and let every man be a liar. So, true, honest, huh? them is the things that will bring virtue. Ephesians 4 2. I'm closing. I'm closing. Ephesians 4 2. Let me see what other characteristics in Ephesians 4 2. The word of God is telling us that as, as the heat is on and don't change. Stay as you are. Huh? I mean in the sense that, you know, and nobody can move me. This is the way you this is the way I am. And you know, uh, I talk progress. I talk about progression. Virtue. Are we understanding? With all lowliness, humility. Being a servant, have a heart, a servant heart, loneliness, huh? Nothing is too big. You don't get, you know, get big of your boots. Know that certain things. Oh, you don't call me to do that. I can't, I can't do that. No, I'm a, I am a, I am a apostle. I'm a, a prophet. You know, I don't, I don't do, huh? But I could sweep the church. I could clean the windows. I could clean the bathrooms. Don't let, don't get haughty. With our loneliness. And meekness. This is the pick up the words from what I'm giving you here today. And with long suffering, be able to go through. Huh? Let God change you. No, and, and, and be able to forbear and to forbear and to go through. He said, forbearing one another in love. It's a hard thing, no? But we gotta do it. Is it that we can let the situations change us or we can change the situations? Is it that we can change the environment or we can uh, allow the environment to change us or we can change the environment? Is it that we're going to be salt? Is it that we're going to be light? Or are we going to be thrown out? I don't want to be thrown out. I want, even if I, even if I stand alone, I, can, I got to make a difference. You all got that same kind of mentality, even if it's me, Lord, when everybody is on the pose of denial and everybody going a different way, I stand in for you. Proverbs 10, 9. We're going down. Qualities of when we talk about virtue, the kind of people that we ought to be. You know the word of God says that we are to walk worthy. There's something about Christian behavior. Walking worthy. Walking with purpose, walking like a Christian, huh? behaving as a Christian. Huh? And Ephesians says, He that walk, Proverbs 10 9, He that walk, how you gonna, how you gonna walk? Like a drunken man, huh? Huh? all over the place. You don't know who you are. He walk uprightly, walk if what? Sure, man, you're sure about your. He that perverted his ways. Lord help me, Jesus. It says it takes so much to build integrity. I only was straw to cut it down. It takes so much effort and take to build up integrity. But wall is straw shut the whole thing down. Huh? He that perverted his ways shall be known. So we got to walk with integrity. Don't mind the heat on. Huh? Don't mind this pandemic on and all condition. And this year, 22, a lot of other things that take place. A lot of changes coming. Some are going to affect you all in your jobs. Changes coming. But don't let that change you. Walk up right to here. Psalm 55, 22. Psalm 55, 22. Anybody receiving today? Anybody eating from this meat? Huh? I prepared here a good, solid diet. 
Uh -huh. You have a balanced diet. This ain't macaroni and <laughs> no, 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 no. This is solid food. This ain't nothing to clog you up. Huh? This is solid food. Balance. Balance here. Balance proportions. Balance, balance, balance. When you're done, you're going to build strong bones. Strong bones. You can be able to lift some heavy weight. Cast your burden. That's, that's Psalms 55, 22. Upon the who. Regardless of what comes your way this year, remember there's a God who cares for you. And whatever you would face, you could, you could carry it to him. You can cast it on him. Hmm? And remember of how the outcome, because it don't always be what you might be looking for. God said he's going to sustain you. Hmm? He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. As long as we deal, we're talking about virtue, in righteousness and in honesty, don't cut corners because you see this hard times that are upon us, those of you that got businesses, there's a time where a lot of people could cut corners and do dishonest deeds because they want quick money. It's just like when I was working, how some people used to um, tell people to make fictitious invoices and sending the, the price on those invoices as, as not the right price so that I could escape duties. Huh? Fraud. Fraudulent activities. And a quick, quick fix. Huh? Bribery. And all of these things. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Huh? Be careful because what you gain or the devil back, you're going to lose. Or what people tell you so. And Psalms 1 tells me, huh? blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Huh? But his delight though. Huh? So the word tells us uh, the righteous, when we work righteousness and we have that moral um, standard and ask God to help us because we are human and you can be tempted uh, to do on the hand things, ask God to help you to be righteous. Hmm? If, you, if you do this for me, I can do this for you. Who are you talking to though? You are insulting me, though. You, you trying to insult me. You trying to insult my intelligence. If you do this for me, I can do for me. I will not be a part of your bribery. You will not bribe me. I hope none of you were bribed when the cars were going around. I hope none of you were brave. Righteous shall not be moved. Must be a person of integrity. First Peter 2 9. Wrapping up. We are going home. But we must have the word. Huh? When you leave here, you gotta leave having something that will keep you when days in the sun. First Peter now. Two, nine. We're going to read this here and I'm going to make this the last. I have so much other scriptures to give to you, but I'm going to make this the last and then we're we continuing. We're continuing. But you are a church. You are a church. A, a, a that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness. Into his marvelous son. Now lift your hands and give God some praise in this place. Don't let anybody sell you short. Remember who you are. Remember all the things that I've told you today. That God has given to you grace and peace and power. And have given you a partake of the divine nature. 
that you are ear in a junk ear. This thing could, this thing would make me run. Jesus. Huh? You, you already gather the thing that God has done for us at Calvary. You, you, talk, you talk it was a little some, some small work thing that he did. He restored me back into the position that Satan robbed me from. Giving me back my dominion, authority, and power that was stolen from me. That I can be a chosen generation. I can be of that royal line. I can be a holy nation. Peculiar people. That my life, my life, and what comes out of me huh, will not only be to say hallelujah or say praise God with my lips, but my very lifestyle will be speaking a language. My very lifestyle will be speaking praise as I walk. I'm speaking praise. I'm talking about just saying it from my mouth. Understand what I'm saying here today. Not just from my lips, but my lifestyle because of the virtue that is in me when I walk. The people of virtue. People of high ranking is good, high, good standing. You hear what I'm telling you? Because even when you go down in the word of God, the, the word is there. The ones who are holding office in, in, in the church, he already prescribed there through the word. What kind of people they should be? I'm moral character. Now you hear people say, people of the cloth. That there should be a separation between state and the church. The church should bother what the state do. The, the, the church should get into the business. Let the state do whatever they want to do. But I want to tell you, we have to settle for people of virtue. If it takes only you, we're standing. Daniel and the Hebrew boys in my closing had to take a stand. There were only a few of them in that day. The, the, the decree was, every one of you when you hear the music, this image here that is being set up, everyone give a business and bow. They, those boys wasn't taught so. It was not in their DNA. So even though they was in a foreign place, they still remained faithful to Almighty God and still allowed the virtue that was within them that was, was handed out to them from the parents and whatever be displayed and when all that music you know music you know music you know music when it strike up if you don't be careful it will take you over all kind of emotions all kind of thing when music strike up and you know oh boy when the music strike up the people begin but there was some boys there like this yellow in budging no matter how the music playing, the boys ain't moving, the boys ain't bowing, and somebody noticed them too. You will be noticed when you stand for God. Stand to your feet this morning.